Many people who are interested in crystals and metaphysical ideas and spirituality in general are usually told that sage is the go-to for cleansing yourself, your space, and your crystals. But as spirituality and metaphysical practices are becoming more and more popular, it's also becoming more well known that sage is a sacred herb and should be off limits to people who are not indigenous. I don't believe that people are purposefully ignoring this fact, I just think people aren't aware. Like myself, I was not aware. Last year and the year before, I made a few crystal videos and while I hate watching my old videos, I'm sure I mentioned using sage as a way to cleanse your stones. I don't use it too often, I prefer other methods to cleanse my stones and my space. So because of this, I wasn't knowledgeable enough to know that it was a closed and sacred practice to indigenous people. And I do apologize for that. So for anyone else who wasn't aware, I hope this video helps you because there are plenty of other ways to cleanse your stones and your space. So first, why do you even have to cleanse stones? Well, cleansing stones is said to help remove stagnant energy, keeping them fresh. Depending on how you use your stones, some can absorb negative energy, so every so often it's a good idea to cleanse them, to reset them, if you will. So the first way to cleanse your stones without using sage is selenite. Selenite is a great stone to use to clear other stones. Selenite is said to attract energy of light and purification. It's a great stone to have because it never needs to be cleansed, no matter how many times you use it. I sell these little selenites on my Etsy shop and I've noticed with almost every order, people buy a little selenite stick, which proves to me that people are aware of what it does and how great of an alternative it is to using sage. Simply keep selenite near your other stones to cleanse them. You can wave it over stones like a wand for a few minutes or do whatever feels right for you. You really can't do it wrong. The second way to cleanse your stones without using sage is water. Water in itself is a great way to cleanse stones. I prefer to use rainwater or river water, spring water, just because it feels more natural to me. But you can also use running water from the sink. Again, there's no way you can do it wrong. Exception. The only way you can do it wrong is if you're using a stone that doesn't like water. There are a few stones that if you put it in water, they will get ruined, so definitely be careful. A general rule of thumb is to avoid putting stones in water that end in ite, like I-T-E. Here's a list of just a few stones that you definitely shouldn't put in water. No! The third way to cleanse your stones without using sage is moonlight. The full moon is full of energy and it can cleanse and charge your crystals. You can either lay them outside on the grass, you could put them on a table outside, or you can just put them on a windowsill. But Courtney, my house doesn't get direct moonlight. What do I do? I get questions and comments all the time of people being afraid to do something wrong when it comes to crystals. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to remind you that there's no reason to be afraid. At the end of the day, they are rocks. <laughs> like really beautiful rocks, but they're rocks. They grow in the earth for millions of years. And while people believe they do have metaphysical benefits, I can assure you that for thousands of years, not every single person was cleansing their stones before using them. People use them as home decor. A lot of people don't know to cleanse them and that's okay. Cleansing them helps, but it's not the be all end all of life. The fourth way to cleanse your crystals without using sage is salt. Salt is purifying and in the metaphysical world, it's said to be protective and cleansing. Think about in Hocus Pocus when Allison put a circle of salt around them to protect them from the witches. So, submerging your stones into a small bowl of sea salt or pink Himalayan salt is another easy option. Completely submerge the stones in the salt and allow it to soak for a few hours. Then just take it out and rub the salt off. Similarly, rice can actually be used to cleanse stones. Think about when you have water in your cell phone, you put it in rice and it absorbs the water. It's also believed that it absorbs like the energy as well. The sixth way that you can cleanse your stones without using sage is by using sound. Using sound to cleanse stones is one of my personal favorite ways to do it, mainly because it also uplifts me as well. This is a really great way to cleanse your stones if you have a huge collection. All you have to do is collect your stones into one area. And if you have a singing bowl or a tuning fork, 
play the sound anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. If you allow yourself to get into a meditative state while you're doing this, it'll really affect you and make you feel amazing. If you don't have any of those, don't worry. YouTube has many, many sound healing videos. I'll leave some of my favorites in the description box for you, but some include gong baths, singing bowls, binaural beats, meditation music, the list could go on and on. And while there are other ways to cleanse your stones, like by using the smoke from incense or even daylight, the last one I'm gonna end on is visualization. <laughs> I can never say that word, visualization. I feel like this may be intimidating to some of you. And again, I wanna take the time to really address this. You can trust yourself. The power of intention is a very powerful thing. So even if you think you're doing it completely wrong, just by believing that you can do it, you're gonna do something good. Nothing scary or bad is gonna come out of you putting intention into cleansing your stones. Like, you'll be fine. I feel like there's this huge problem, I almost wanna say, of spiritual materialism. And I was starting to fall into this as well by collecting all the oracle decks, all the crystals I could get my hands on. And because I felt like I needed that to become a more spiritual person and honestly that's not true at all you you don't need anything all you need are the tools you have in your mind so let's talk about how to use visualization to cleanse your stones sit with your stone or stones and get really grounded imagine your hands are filling with energy envision the light swirling around inside of the stones swishing around all of the impurities and flushing them out if you don't necessarily believe in the metaphysical side of crystals, that's okay. No one can prove that crystals have metaphysical powers or magical powers or anything like that. But what we do know to be true is color psychology, the placebo effect. Whatever side you fall on, metaphysical or scientific, they work because you believe they work. None of these cleansing methods are any better than the other. Just use whatever feels good to you and works well within your lifestyle. I'm gonna leave the link to my Etsy shop in the description box if you are interested. If you like these videos, I'm gonna leave this playlist over here for you to entertain yourself forever on all of the different mystical content I've made over the years. Some of them may be bad and some of them I may be using sage, but again, I apologize for that. I just was not aware at the time.